Cornelius. Although he had not come to know Jesus yet, his time had not come. And the Scripture says he prayed to the God of heaven. Acts chapter 10, verse 30. On the screen it says, So Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. I want to look, talk about this for a minute. Here was a man. Still... The only thing he knew, he wasn't, he wasn't a Jew, and the only thing he knew was what he had been taught from others in the Jewish faith about the God of heaven, and that was the God he was praying to. He was praying personally to the God of heaven, and the interesting thing is when this angel of God showed up, he said these words, and your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God. Because what if, what if God was still responding that way today? What if God is still responding that way today? And I believe He is. And there's times when, when God just watches to see, are you going to seek it? Are you going to be a man or a woman that says, I've set my heart toward Him and I am going to please God? He says, God, it comes right down to it. Here's what God was saying. I've seen your prayers. I've seen your giving. I've seen how you've loved the, the, the uh, people financially. I've seen how that you've prayed and sought me even though uh, you, you're not a Jew. You're, you're, technically, you're not even the, the people of God, but yet at the same time, you want to know the God of heaven, and I'm going to reward you with myself. And we find in Cornelius' life that his whole family came to know Jesus. His whole family, his servants, all of that group of people came to know Jesus because one man said, I am going to seek the face of God. Because what I'm trying to do is help us to understand God wants a relationship with you. I want your attendance, church. I want you, I, I, I'm, I'm talking about me for a minute. What I want as a man, obviously I want to see you here. I want, to see, I want to see the church blessed. And I want to tell you something. God wants something to give it. I want the same thing. I want to see you know it. I want, I want to see you flow out of an intimate relationship with Him. I was talking to someone the other day in this church, and I won't mention their name, and how they got a breakthrough from God. And I can tell, I can see it in their life, I can hear it in their speech, that something happened in their life because they got the breakthrough. There's peace upon their life like it's never been before. God takes notice when people care enough to pray genuinely to Him. No rehearsed prayer, no vain repetitions and praises is going to get God to move, but our heart will. Peter went up on the housetop to pray. It was about lunchtime. It was noon. He's a lot like me. And I think about Peter. He got hungry. He did. Scripture said he got hungry. It's lunchtime. He probably doesn't have breakfast. Those eggs are gone. It's time for lunch. They're preparing food down below. And the interesting thing is, is God, as He begins to pray, He gets a, falls into a trance, gets a vision from God, and the vision was related to food. He says, rise, Peter. The, tent, the, the, the sheep came down with all these animals, and He says, rise, Peter, kill and eat. <laughs> now, interesting, Peter was hungry. I, I, I find it interesting. God said, I relate with you where you're at. Of course, it had significant meaning, uh, twofold, that we can eat other things besides uh, beef and lamb. We, get a little, we can get some bacon now if we want to, and all that stuff, we'll get into that. But what he was really trying to say to him is that there's another world that you haven't cons you've considered unclean, and I'm saying they're not, they're not unclean anymore. If you see, when we pray, God gives us an appointment. And He begins to show us things the way we need to experience them and see them. That if we didn't have that relationship, we miss it. What's that song say? What, what peace we often for because we don't go to our Lord in prayer? Some of you might know that song, Old Hymn. 
oh what peace we often forfeit because we don't go, we don't take everything to him to our Lord in prayer. Church, he wants a relationship with you. He's not wanting. I'm going to tell you what he didn't do. When you came this morning, he's very glad because it said, I came to seek God. But he didn't put a little mark up here for you. He said, one up for them. When you gave in the offering plate, he didn't say, one more up for them. He didn't do that. When you danced a little bit with Julie sang, he didn't put a little mark up there and say, one up for them. Those are our benefits. Our privileges, our responsibilities, our joys. But we don't make ourselves right by those things. God wants a heart that's after you. That's after you. Jesus was God in the flesh. The forerunner for us. Our example. Our biggest, our older brother. The second Adam. That's who he was. And listen to this example that he sent for us. And, and, and I'll just read these to you. Mark 1.35. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place. And there he prayed. He's God in the flesh. And yet he says, I want, I need, and I'm going to fulfill this. I'm going to spend time with my Father. Do you get along with Him? Do you have a time when you get along with Him? I'm going to tell you, when you get along with Him, He'll tell you this. He'll calm you. He'll speak into your life. He'll give you direction. He'll give you peace. Do you, do you get along with Him? Do you have a time when you do it? I'll tell you what, if you never do it, your relationship is weak. I'm just I'm being honest with you. If you come to church every Sunday and never miss a service, if you don't have any quiet time with God, none at all, your relationship is going to be very weak. Because all you've got is God trying to speak to you and you're not really committing a time to be with Him. And when, you, when you set aside time, what you're doing is you're opening the channels up and saying, I want to be with you. I want to hear from you. I open this word. When I open this word, I, I open that. I say, Lord, I, I, I need. I need from this word. I need something from this word. I want to hear your voice from this word. I need direction from this word. This wasn't just one time in the life of Jesus. It was the character who He was. You find it again in Mark chapter 6, 46. And when He had sent them away, He departed to the mountains of Christ. He had the crowd. He had thousands of people following Him at some point. He had popularity. Of course, every time He wasn't popular. But He had a lot of people after Him. But yet, He sent them away. Because I got something better than that. Some people would just glory in the presence of the people. In the popularity of the people. He could have become the king. He could have forced himself to be the king of the people at that time. And people would have had to bow down to him. He could have made it happen. But that's not what he did. He pulls away. I need to be with my father. See, everything's by choice for us. He could make you bow your knee. Bend your heart. He can make you do those things, but He will not violate your self-will that has to be in surrender to Him for this thing to work the way it needs to be. In Luke chapter 5, 16, so He Himself often withdrew into the wilderness to pray. You find in Matthew, when He's getting ready, He just gets baptized in water. The Spirit of the Lord descended upon his life. It was a precious time in his life. His ministry just started. His first time that the public ministry of his life just started. And the Word of God said the Spirit of the Lord led him into the wilderness. For 40 days and 40 nights, what did he do for 40 days and 40 nights? He sought the Lord. See, sometimes in relationships, though, we think... God just 
doesn't really need to hear from us. So therefore, we don't communicate with Him the way that we need to communicate with Him. And sometimes we have times in our life where we just think that we just need to keep talking. And we never really hear. I don't believe that was the case with Christ and the Father. I believe there was communion in that relationship. Scripture says, they think they will be heard for their many words. What kind of God would God be if He was waiting for us to just say, i got to get my thousand words. Well, they got their thousand words in. And they said five religious words when they said it. God wants a relationship. Religion may say, pray at least this long, but a relationship says never leave home without it. I'm not advocating to you that we don't make long prayers. Because sometimes I believe when you pray, you're going to pray for a long time. Sometimes you may go to the Lord and you may pray five minutes. And you're released. Other times you know you, you're not released and you just... You're like, you're like Jesus after the baptism and led into the Spirit. Led by the Spirit into the wilderness. You're led. It's a relationship. When the Spirit releases you, you're done. I remember one time I said it was a New Year's uh, celebration. I was out at the Garrett's actually. Didn't sleep all that night. And uh, the next morning I got up and said, Lord, I, this year, this new year, I am going to give you one hour every single day. Well, the problem with that was it became mechanical and lifeless after about 10 minutes. There might be times it was vic victorious and powerful and precious, but other times, boy, I still got 45 minutes. I got to make sure I get my time. See, something different happened. Okay, when Christ comes into our life, something different happened than just let me get that time in. Something different happened that God doesn't walk with man, but in man. Yes. And even though I need to set aside time to hear from Him and read His Word and make sure that's a part of our life that we open up that channel, it doesn't have to be 20 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour or two or, or, or 40 days and 40 nights. It needs to be our life. It's who we are. We, we live it. We breathe it. We go to sleep at night. We're thinking about Him. We wake up thinking about Him. Throughout the day, we think about Him. He's in all of our thoughts and all of the things that we're going through in our life. He is our life. Our life is hidden in Christ and Him. Amen. The church is sin. We, we have religion as a, a compartment of our life. And so therefore, because He's a compartment of our life, we pray sometimes. That he is to be Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I know this is right. This is good. Amen. This is good. I don't, I don't necessarily mean it's good preaching. It's good what Jesus did. Yes. It's good preaching too. <laughs> but it's good what Jesus has provided for us is 24 hours a day, seven days a week access to Him. Living in us. With, with the ability to pray in various ways at different times as the Spirit leads us ever how that is. You may be driving down the road one day, but you can pray, just don't close your eyes. <laughs> driving down your road, driving down the road, and the Lord puts someone across your mind. You haven't thought about it in a long time, and the Holy Spirit prompts you and says, pray for that person. It may be that all of a sudden you start thinking of Scott Martin and Israel, and you pray for that person. You think about Carolyn who needs her, her body whole and though you're going to get texts from me and, and, and saying these are prayer requests and we can stop at that moment and utter some words before the Lord and no, we don't have to uh, start speaking in tongues immediately and, and, and shaking in things. We can just say, Lord, touch. Touch her body. You, you understand where I'm coming from? This is a call a real relationship with Jesus. And we've taken something that's real in the church and made it unreal. And made it a compartment. We're going to have Thursday night corporate prayer to come together as a body in unity and pray for certain needs in this congregation. But it's still personal. 
It's still a personal thing. You're just coming as your person in agreement with what's right together and believing in the Word of God and seeing lives change. Let's stand together. Julie, if you come.